This is the plates for an old Gilbert clock. It's oh, probably a hundred years old. This was a was a keepsake from somebody that somehow they got put back off in the on the garage someplace. When Bob McPeak retired from the Salinas Police Force five years ago, he found he had a lot of time on his hands. So what he did was to make use of that time and enroll in a clock repair class at San Jose. He now works out of his home in Salinas, and he's one man who'll set your ticker straight. Well, it's a dying art. As far as I know, there's only one other person in Salinas that uh, commercially repairs clocks, and he doesn't do very much. He's a watch repairman and does clocks on the side. But as far as I know, I'm the only one in Salinas that uh, does it full-time. For Bob, a full-time job means just that. He spends his late evening hours over a maze of wheels, pins, and gizmos. And more importantly, Bob keeps track of every little wheel every spring and improvises when he has to. This particular wheel here has one of the pins is, is missing from it. I'll have to make it. You can't buy parts for uh, the wheels of old clocks. You have to make all of them. In here, dirt is my enemy, because I don't want to get dust and dirt in here. But out when the clock's being used, that's really my friend, because that's what makes clocks go haywire, is getting uh, the dirt in there that mixes in with the oil and gets like a valve grinding compound. Bob McPeak says a good clock can go on running forever if they're properly maintained. This is Bob's personal clock and it's already 150 years old. A while ago, I worked on an English uh, grandfather clock that when I took it apart, I found the markings inside about when it was uh, cleaned or repaired. And the first one was 1822, and it had been repaired. Whoever did it uh, took care of it, and it showed right on the 1822, about three years later, 1825, was cleaned again, and went right on down up until around the 1900s. Well, this is what they call an antique kitchen clock. It was made, oh, they were very popular around the, in the 1900s. This was designed when uh, families could only afford one clock and they had it in the kitchen. That's why they called it the kitchen clock. Just a little more modern one, the uh, cuckoo clock here that does various things. When it, when it strikes, the old beer drinkers have a shot at a beer. And in the hour, do the same thing, but then we have the the mug of beer comes out with the music. It's quite, quite unique. When Bob McPeak runs out of room on his walls, he'll set his clocks on the shelf or on the floor. His small workshop is a miniature museum, a place where Father Time could spend eternity listening to his children marking time. In here now, I have some cuckoo clocks that have music boxes. I have uh, grandfather clocks that have deep sounds. Some have higher pitch sounds. It, it, I like it. I, li I like the ticking. It has uh, the sticking of all the clocks in here. Now there are about 25 or 30 clocks in here running. It has an, I feel it has a nice, warm, friendly sound. Bob McPeak is surrounded with the sounds of success. At 60, Bob certainly has no time for retirement. He's an active member of the American Watchmakers Institute. That certainly qualifies him in his field. But Bob McPeak doesn't need a certificate on his wall to prove how good he is. All the proof is already on the wall. This is Pete Fuentes in Salinas, traveling in Camino, California.